Hi, I'm Michael Garcia, and I'm a fellow in the Share Their Mic and Cyber Initiative. In 2007, the first iPhone was released, and 4G connections rolled out a year later. With wide-scale adoption of smartphones and access to 4G, mobile apps took off. It was unthinkable back then that we'd use a cell phone to get someone's car, translate a menu into different languages in real time, and FaceTime someone from across the world with literally no lag time. Yet the cybersecurity implications of these apps were not thought of until the incidents started happening. Few, if any, raised alarms about foreign interference and in elections by manipulating social media, the sale of American data to unregulated data brokers that could then be bought by law enforcement agencies was one of dystopian future. And the proliferation of virtual currency, starting with Bitcoin in 2009, helped give rise to devastating ransomware attacks, all of which brought on by the onset of 4G applications. With the deployment of 5G towers throughout the United States, 5G cable phones and other devices will increasingly proliferate. But the true benefits of 5G will be those taking advantage of reduced up and down data streams, primarily virtual reality and augmented reality applications, or VR and AR for short. The increased adoption of 5G devices in the United States will spur widespread use of AR and VR, primarily known as extended reality applications, or XR for short. And it will become accessible through a single or set of metaverses. By this, I mean a collection of virtual ecosystems that will allow users to interact with each other and their surroundings in a creative and collaborative manner in virtual spaces or physical environments that are digitally manipulated by static or mobile devices. In other words, one does not need a VR headset to access the metaverse, but one simply only needs access to a cell phone and the internet. The global XR market could be anywhere from $476 billion in 2025, which would be an increase from $46.4 billion from 2019. The EU estimates that it could create anywhere between 440,000 jobs to 860,000 jobs by 2025. Indeed, one prediction estimates that the world could see 23 million jobs created. While these numbers may seem a bit fantastical, admittedly, it becomes a bit more realistic given the amount of users who could be using XR applications. Today, Americans from 16, 64 years old an average of seven hours a day online. You're doing it right now. If that trend holds or more likely expands, one estimate projects that the metaverse will increase the data usage of each internet user by 20 times. Importantly, XR applications must be thought beyond video games or form of communication. Rather, they must be seen as technology that's currently being used or one day will be used in various industries. For example, since 2017, a water utility in Australia has used VR to allow users to walk through a virtual model of the treatment plant, helping them identify more design problems than traditional walkthroughs. The US Army Corps of Engineers is identifying AR, VR solutions to help a flood risk management infrastructure. But more consequentially is how militaries will use XR technologies and metaverses. The US military has used XR technology for decades, starting in the 50s, in which the Air Force used simulations to replicate cockpit experiences for pilots. Since then, the importance of XR technology across all U.S. military branches has only grown. Just one point, the U.S. Army has created a synthetic training environment to help train soldiers in realistic battlefields. Highlighting these use cases is important to detail the significance of the cybersecurity implications that could arise if a bad actor successfully exploits vulnerabilities within these systems. VR headsets, for example, will introduce a host of new vulnerabilities that could allow hackers to record audio and steal sensitive information. Malicious actors could also exploit XR software to achieve their goals by taking over a user's VR headset, to look at their screen, to turn on their microphone, and install a virus on their computer and others. But one of the more unique outcomes that a bad actor could achieve is by physically manipulating a user. This has honestly been dubbed the human joystick phenomenon. In fact, one study found that nearly 90% of subjects could have their movements controlled by addition of content to their VR screen. One could imagine the consequences that could happen in a military context. Moreover, bad actors don't need to exploit a headset or an XR software to achieve their goals, but they could potentially a data hosting provider, like a managed service provider, and launch additional ransomware attacks that would encrypt the data that is necessary and needed for the XR application to function. Lastly, all of these examples touch on various aspects of users and organization privacy, an issue that we've been grappling with for decades. The United States must also contend with how other governments are developing policies to incentivize or regulate their XR market, which could impact how they're used within the United States. The European Union, for example, 
has created a strategy to detail how it will incentivize its XR market on one hand, while simultaneously initiating processes to decide how to regulate this market on the other. South Korea and Japan are investing millions of dollars to provide government services to their citizens in the metaverse. But more consequential is how China views the metaverse. China has created a five-year plan that details how to become a global leader in supplying the XR technology supply chain. In this plan, it notes that they will develop dedicated processing chips for VR, near eye displays, and other key devices. China has also taken a prominent role in developing international standards, primarily through the UN's focus group on the metaverse. Through this working group, the UN is analyzing the technical requirements of the metaverse for the international community. China has a representative in nearly each of the 10 sub working groups and recently held the focus group's second forum in Shanghai this past July. As an aside, the United States is absent in this focus group. Lastly, and maybe most concerning, the People's Liberation Army is looking to build the Battleverse to assist in military training, simulating war scenarios, testing new weapons, enabling research, and supporting communications. Compared to China and other countries, the United States is woefully behind in establishing any policies to incorporate XR technologies into society, let alone dealing with cybersecurity concerns. The US government has, in fact, issued several strategies on national security, emerging tech, and cybersecurity that could impact security of XR technologies. However, they do not explicitly mention XR or the metaverse. And despite the creation of a congressional caucus on VR and AR issues, the Hill has introduced limited bills to address these cybersecurity concerns. Therefore, it is imperative that the US government work closely with industry, academia, nonprofits, and international partners to begin thinking about these consequential issues. This could include encouraging XR companies to adopt security frameworks and best practices, becoming more involved in developing international standards, examining existing regulations, and determining if at all the US XR market should receive financial incentives. And most notably, whether or not we should incorporate these XR technology companies into our critical infrastructure paradigm so that the US government can leverage certain authorities, forums, and information sharing protocols to enhance cybersecurity efforts. Unfortunately, the over-commercialization of the term metaverse has impeded honest conversations about the implications of an insecure metaverse. As a result, US policymakers run afoul of repeating a critical past mistake, failing to secure technology before it ushers in a new era of national security concerns.